Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining on time. I'm going to quickly share the screen, make sure everyone can see my slide. Are we all good? Can everyone see? We're good. All right. All right. Well, uh, hello and welcome to our Ingram webinar on preparing for CMMC 2.1, our MSP workshop and guidance uh, of how you as an MSP can help your organizations that are compliant with CMMC as it starts to roll out in early 2025. My name is Brianna Lau. I'm the Global Growth Solutions Lead at Ingram Micro, specific for security. And I'm joined by our panel of experts from XQ Message, as well as Mercat Cyber, who are gonna be sharing their insights and best practices on how to achieve CMMC 2.1 compliance with Microsoft Solutions. If you're not familiar with CMMC, it does stand for the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. And it's a framework that was developed by the Department of Defense to enhance the cybersecurity of the DIB or defense industrial base, which consists of over 300,000 companies that work with the DOD. As a managed service provider or MSP, you play a crucial role in our client success, uh, especially as they work in part of the DIV or work with CUI, um, which stands for Controlled Unclassified Information. The deadline for CMMC 2.0 is not far away. Um, so in order for you to help prepare your organizations or customers with this, uh, we are going to go through a few topic areas to get you uh, ready and up to speed. We've allotted two hours of time. We're definitely not going to be using the full two hours. Um, and the end is really for you to come speak up, ask questions. We have a great panel of guests uh, that can help guide you on any of the questions that you might have. But starting off, we're going to go through a quick overview of CMMC 2.1, what's changed, what is the impact to organizations, what are some of the upcoming deadlines and best practices from a CMMC certified assessor, which we are joined by Mercat Cyber. We're going to go through guidance of level one and level two and the right solution fit in respect to Microsoft. We're going to overview and get into a deeper dive of our Microsoft 365 business premium commercial solution in tandem with XQ message to meet level two requirements. And then we're gonna go through a demo of the solution. Um, and last but not least, because we do have a, a lot of great nuggets that can get you started in the right direction. We're gonna have a slide that goes through some of the enablement, some of the demand generation activities that Ingram can support you with if you're currently in this field and guiding around CMMC. So with that, um, I wanna bring on board our our um, guests and have them do a quick introduction of their role. So Chris, um, maybe I can start it off with you. Yes, thank you, Brianna. And thank you everybody for attending today. <clears throat> My name is Chris Haig. I am a CMMC certified assessor, as well as a certified professional and certified instructor. Uh, we at Meerkat Cyber specialize 99% on CMMC and NIST frameworks. And what we bring to the table is a lot of certifications, but also some industry experience that I think really helps tie that into uh, both MSPs and into the DIB. <clears throat> uh, my background is aeronautical engineering, followed by law, followed by a lot of work in the Senate and policy analysis. And then I got into CMMC and fell in love with it because they, that just combines everything that I, I geek out about. Um, Two of the guys that are joining me today, Daniel and John on the panel. John is John Richards. He is an MSP and comes with that kind of experience who also then trained under me and uh, has his CCP um, uh, background and training. Likewise, Daniel is somebody I've known for a number of years. John, by the way, and I date back to Cub Scouts. That'll tell you it's at least five or 10 years we've known each other. Um, Daniel and I date back quite a few years, and his family has been involved in the DIB as a manufacturer. So uh, they did a lot of um, airline parts, jet engines, things like that, that um, particularly fascinate, fascinate me as well. And Daniel said, hey, I want to get to know the CCP more, took the course, uh, went out and took the test, I think, two weeks later and passed on the first time, which is not an easy accomplishment. 
And now uh, starting next week is uh, burning down the certified assessor path. So we expect him to be at an equal level as far as certifications with me anytime. Uh, that's what our team brings to the table. We are excited to talk about this stuff. Please ask us any questions you guys have, and we hope we can uh, leave everybody enlightened today. And moving on to Daniel, do you want to do a quick introduction? Yeah, um, yeah. So as Chris said in, in there, uh, uh, my name is Daniel Stark, a CCP. I have uh, grown up in a machine shop. Uh, I started in, being around uh, manufacturing since I was two years old. Uh, have a heart for the small business owner and understand a lot of the pain points that the uh, MSP's clients are going to be dealing with uh, when it comes to IT budgets and implementation, the culture shift. Um, so I come into it trying to help uh, bring the equivalencies from other standards that manufacturers are familiar with um, to to try to smooth over and um, decrease the investment, both monetary and time in implementing uh, 800-171 for CMMC. Awesome. And then we'll move it over to you, Brian. Thanks. Hi, I'm Brian Wayne. I'm the CEO here at XQ Message. XQ Message is a zero trust data security platform, and we focus on allowing companies to achieve CMMC level two compliance on the commercial cloud, specifically with Microsoft Business Premium, E3, E5, and GCC. Turning it over to Kelby. Thanks, Brian. Um, my name is Kelby, and I'm the Vice President of Corporate Development and Partnerships here at XQ. Uh, I may be familiar to some of you, but look forward to meeting others. I help XQ establish really strong partnerships with managed service providers and systems integrators and the like who are really providing their customers insight into how they can, in a cost efficient manner, accomplish CMMC 2.0 by the end of the year, which as we will go into shortly, will be a requirement to maintain existing contracts or bid on new contracts with the DOD. Look forward to meeting with a number of you after this call and sharing how we can support you as well. I'll pass it to Tryon, our solutions architect, who really will have the best part of this presentation, which is when we get into the XQ demo, in my mind. Awesome. Thanks, Kelby. Uh, my name's Tryon, and I head up our solutions architect team. I work closely with a number of our clients to handle all of their integrations and ensure everything goes smoothly, as well as any custom integrations into their existing architecture. I will pass it back to Brianna. Awesome. So as you can see, we are stacked with a lot of expertise and knowledge on this call. So I think we're going to get very interesting in the Q&A portion. But without further ado, I, I do want to pass it to Chris to start us off around the overview. Thank you, Brianna. There it is. Thank you. So little did I know there are these little tiny arrows at the bottom left to allow me to advance through, but you have to hover down there. Let's talk about why CMMC exists, first of all. Um, this on the right is a lawsuit or part of a lawsuit that was filed by the US government because, well, it wasn't the first time, but it was so massive, the government said, we're done with this. In 2014, the FBI arrested a Chinese national, actually in Canada, for hacking into a number of defense contractors, including Boeing, including Lockheed, but also a lot of subcontractors. And we're gonna talk about why that's critical. Uh, 32 different US projects were found in the materials they collected, 220 megabytes of data. And what we see here is they took our F-22 and our F-35. This is the F-22. Um, when the FBI circled back and said, Boeing, did you guys know? Um, and they talked to all the subs too. Everybody who's working for Boeing who's making even just a, an engine part or uh, a support for a wing, they get some of the documentation, what we call CUI, we'll get into that too, that is critical to national security. We don't want this to go into the hands of our enemies or they're gonna have um, technical drawings like this that they can exactly duplicate what we have. 
they circle back and said, did you guys know about this? Did, did you detect anything? No, we didn't. Well, that's kind of a problem. What can we do about that? So we have number one data leaks that were handing over billions of dollars of technology that we developed, thank you taxpayers, and just giving it to the Chinese. There's an article right there. You guys will get the slide deck that you can click on these and see, but that's um, a little bit more of a discussion of the Chinese hacker story as it relates to the F-35 and the F-22. And then IP theft, another issue that just gets worse every year is IP theft costs the US economy 600 billion a year. What can we do to fix that? The DOD has said, <clears throat> there is no going back to, you know, let's not worry about this. It's a massive issue. It doesn't matter what it costs. And that's one of the themes you'll see with CMMC is, yes, we're sensitive, but we don't care. It's not going to matter what it costs. We need to see you implement to be safe. So these are some of the things that have prompted the CMMC to even exist in the first place. And that's why we are um, going down this path. And quickly, we'll talk about that. So this is kind of a fun topic. I've pulled this into our CMMC training. Which one is the F-35? Most people can't tell the difference. John Bolton, our former national security advisor, said both. That's because China duplicated it so well. One of the stories that makes it back, I don't know how true it is, but for this aeronautical engineer, I find it funny. They stole the drawings and were able to duplicate it extremely well. What they didn't know how to do was fly the thing. So that was almost this learning curve and a lot of mistakes there. But we spent, the US spent $400 billion just developing the F-35. Can you imagine what it is like for somebody to open up a vault and just have $400 billion just because they hacked? Here's $400 billion of research and development free. So we build one, China got it free. There's a lot more discussion there in this link. And by the way, the J-20 is on the top. F-35 is down below. The one very small thing you can see in this is to the right of the J-20, they have like a little needle protrusion that sticks out a little bit farther. That's one of the easiest and possibly the only way for most civilians to be able to look at it and say, oh, I see, I see which one it is. I am. There we go. So what is the CMMC? The intention was obviously to enhance cybersecurity. The defense industrial base has a target written on its back, but not only that, consistently evolving threats. And so you think yesterday's trick to get in the door worked and you fixed it. Um, yeah, you're going to have to address a new one tomorrow and a new one the day after that. There are estimates of thousands of attempted hacks every day for every single dib manufacturer. You've got to be a fortress. So the CMMC intent is to make sure the dib is protected as much as can be possible. And there are ways that and we'll talk in detail about this today, but there are ways that the government says, here's how we protect ourselves. When they designed the way to do it for the CMMC, they didn't even make you do all of those to be a part of the dip. They trimmed it down. They knew that it's impossible for you to protect yourself as well as the government does. And let's face it, that's not perfect enough either, but this is a trimmed down version. That's called NIST 53. For those that are interested in how does the government you know, regulate and point to, this is the cybersecurity regulations for us. Uh, this all points to NIST 171. CMMC is built on 171. It's an extremely trimmed down version, a fraction of what you would have to do if you were actually a State Department or, or working in the government. But it's still a lot. So they knew that. Um, the CMMC framework has a scope that reaches not just the 300,000 companies in the DIB, 300,000 plus. This is why it's critical for MSPs. This is already being adopted by Canada. It's, Canada will be one of the first to roll it out. UK has already said we're doing it. Japan, Israel, Mexico, and others. Why is that important? They didn't come up with their own framework and say, we'll try to do it kind of close and we'll uh, all play nicely together. They literally said, we will take the CMMC framework, exactly what you guys are learning. For, and people like Canada, for example, have said, we will take your assessors and come and assess our DIB with your assessors. 
if you're an MSP and you bleed over to Canada or Mexico, critical for you to know you're learning something that goes way beyond our borders that you can help um, your clients and educate them and get them compliant. Here's a, a really interesting wrinkle to this. Stacey Bostinek, who is our CEO at the DOD, she said, watch, and she actually predicted it'd be earlier this year, but there should be a FAR clause soon that will implement CMMC across all federal agencies. What does that mean? Not the federal agencies themselves, what they do internally, because that's NIST 53. It will be anybody who wants to do business with them. So again, MSPs, what a great time to learn this because you will not only be able to go after all the DIB companies, you'll be able to go after clients in uh, nearby countries or partner co uh, countries. You will also be able to go after all federal contractors and states are starting to adopt it too. So it's just this massive, massive opportunity that if you go down this path, yeah, there might be some expenses up front or a learning curve. You will be at the you know, the center of the nest as far as here, there's so much that's going to be happening for you. Um, one of the interesting things as far as scope that just came up is relatively recently, the CMMC rulemaking process finished. They're calling it CMMC 2.1, at least on the leaked documents. And I say that because we got a, an advanced glimpse and what we learned is CMMC 2.1 is what they're calling it. And secondly, electronic service providers are going to have a new rule. They're going to have to be certified as well. So whatever the, the DIB, the contractors themselves are going to need to be compliant with ESPs. And specifically, that means you guys, MSPs, you're going to have to be compliant to the same level as your customer. They want to know that, yes, if you're in there handling their data and you have access and you know you do, what are you doing to protect it? Because we've seen what the Chinese and everybody else is willing to do who's a, a bad actor. They're willing to go to whatever length they can to figure out how to grab that data. So anybody who has anything to do with service providing to the DIB, and eventually, like I said, all federal agencies, you will, or clients serving federal agencies, you will need to get certified. So that's something that you guys want to start ramping up for, and we'll be talking about that today. There, thank you. Somebody did that for me. So what is CMMC? Probably a lot of you know this, so I'll be brief, but we can open this up with questions. There are three levels. It was formerly five when it first came out. The DOD said, let's put this out there. Let's take some public feedback. And after the feedback, they said, all right, we get it. We're going to simplify things. Three levels. They're based on three different regulations. The first one is the FAR clause, commonly known as the FAR clause, 52204-21. That is what they want you to start with. This is called the foundational level. Start with to protect the most basic information, but it's still critical information, FCI. So that's federal contract information. How important is federal contract information? So it is, imagine that an enemy actor knows there's a sandwich provider in the Middle East who's going into um, a certain super secret place, but he's carrying 2,000 sandwiches. Would that be of interest to somebody in the Middle East? Would they like to figure out and follow the delivery truck from um, the warehouse or wherever they got the sandwiches to wherever our U.S. troops are? Of course they would. That was just a contract that somebody spoke about. That needs to be protected. That's actually how they got um, El Chapo, too. The FBI was following him for years and years. You've probably read stories about him. Huge Mexican drug lord. How did they find him eventually? And you guys can look this up. It's really interesting. He ordered a whole bunch of tacos for his whole group. And the FBI is like, wait, follow that delivery truck. And yes, on the other end of that was El Chapo. So federal contract information, as innocent as it might seem, needs to be protected. How can you protect that? They only have 17 controls is what we speak about in CMMC, 17 basic um, areas where you need to um, pay attention to and follow so you are compliant, follow the recommendations. And level one, after the DOD came back with, from the feedback, they said, okay, we get it, level one, we don't want you guys griping about $100,000 expenditure. 
we'll let you do this without being assessed. So you can be a, you can self assess. Third party assessments are going to be expensive. They're going to be in tens of thousands of dollars. The level one people who said all I'm seeing is a, a contract and maybe it's mopping floors or sending sandwiches. I don't have the money for that. DOD came back and said you can do a self attestation, but here's a huge caveat. We've been doing that and it blew up in our face. So you guys better not lie about it because, of course, when everybody's looking at a $2 million contract, they're like, yeah, I'm doing everything I need to do to get that $2 million contract. Of course, I would never do anything differently. I would not deviate from all your recommendations. Turns out some people lied or just were very grossly negligent, and that's how we got here. So level one allows self-attestation with caveats. You better be doing it and to a point where if we want to come in and double check, and they will, we just had that happen with somebody we've been advising, then you better be doing it right. Because now what's on the line is what's called Lincoln's Law. It dates back to Abraham Lincoln when the military started to get, um, so grew in size tremendously, and contractors started taking advantage of the federal government. Well, the Lincoln's Law, also known as the False Claims Act, was born from that, which says, we're going to get kind of pissed and we might just throw you in jail or fine you or put you out of business forever if you want to lie to us, if you want to say you're going to sell us one thing and you don't. So that still applies to this day and it's become bigger and bigger because as we spend a whole bunch of money trying to defend ourselves and the rest of the world, we don't want to be taken advantage of. So self-attestation sounds great. Be careful. I would still recommend advice as an MSP. One of the things you guys can do is help your clients get that advice. If you know that somebody is in the FCI space, level one CMMC, make sure they're talking to somebody who's skilled. Maybe some of your internal staff wants to get skilled, take a CCP course or something so that you can make sure that advice is trickling down to your client and they're avoiding problems. This is a lot of people, 140,000 DIB contractors, plus, as we said earlier, 2.1 says all of their electronic service providers. So that's a large number of people impacted by just level one. Level two, now we're up to the level of CUI. This is an acronym for Controlled Unclassified Information. If you are going to be handed just a, a diagram, but it's for something that might end up in the F-22, we need to know that that's safe for all kinds of reasons. One of them is, yeah, that might just be a piece of the puzzle, but what if somebody can modify that and push that aperture over an inch. Could that take down the entire F-22 fleet with one error that China knows about because they, they move that thing by an inch? Terrible place to be. Anybody who's handling any diagrams or any technical information like that is handling what's called CUI. Most often in a perfectly operating environment, the DOD will identify the CUI and tell you, but it's not always that way. Sometimes the contractor designs it. Sometimes there is nobody watching closely to make sure CUI is marked and it just so suddenly appears to somebody as, well, I hope we're protecting that, that's CUI. At any rate, this is a level two CMMC um, area. And what that means is the federal government has said, we're not gonna mess around with self-attestations anymore. Level two and level three need to have a third party assessment. Thus, third-party assessors were born, also known as Certified Third-Party Assessors, or C3PAO, and about 80,000 DIB contractors and their ESPs, plus all of Level 3. It's a small level, but all of those need to have third-party assessments. The DOD said it's so important, we want an independent body to come in and verify what you're doing is accurate and do it from the standards that we train them. And it's interesting, for the first time, um, they've said, let's completely contain this because we want it so uniform. We don't want you to go read a book or take a course that's offered by, you know, somebody who might be really skilled at government bodies and government regulations. No, you're going to come to us. You're going to take our course with a training module that was approved by us with instructors that were approved by us, thus the certifications we've all had to go through. And that's the only way you're going to get a certified third party. That's the people you have to work with. So they want it so uniform that there's no room for error. Well, it's as much as humanly possible, there's no room for error anymore. And that's how we got here. Level three, it's a small audience, 160 DIB contractors approximately. 
but now we're rising to the level of critical CUI. Maybe that's nuclear power plant operations, submarines, things like that. Um, it's still CUI, so we're not at top secret information always. It can be something that a lot of people wouldn't think, oh, I didn't think we had to protect it that much. Yeah, we still do. It's still critical to our infrastructure, to the U.S., that these technical drawings, even if it's a small, small part, that we protect that. <clears throat> so that is the level three synopsis expert level. All right. I just forwarded us twice. I'm sorry, Barana. There, thank you. So CMMC, while relatively new, technically the guts of it are not. And here's why. The federal government, specifically the DOD, said, NIST, we know you're working on some stuff over there. Can you help us out? 171, which CMMC is based on, was derived from NIST SB 853. And they did that just for defense contractors. But as I've identified, it's going to go beyond that. That's 2016. That's old news. DFARS in 2017, this is the famous DFARS 7012. A lot of people know this just by 7012. That required compliance with 171. And it said, not just contractors, but everybody who works for you. We want this to flow down. That's the words flow down there to anybody who's picking up anything from you because contractors never handle it all themselves, almost never. Prime contractors say, okay, I got a $10 million contract. I, I'm going to need some help here. When that information flows down, that sensitive data, we want to make sure that everyone underneath you is also doing their best to uh, protect it. 2020, they came up with a CMMC. They said, this is coming, this is coming, comes in 2020, January, and it's released as interim final, which is interesting. The DOD said, you can do this as a proposed rule, and it's a long process, and you wait for public feedback. Nope, this is going to be interim final, which means it's effective immediately uh, or short term after this but we will listen to public feedback in the interim. And at that point, there were five levels of maturity. They accepted the public comments and they, um, they said, we'll come back to you. 2020 also, they re released DFAR 7019. That says, now we're doing self-assessments. So this is still, you guys have heard of this already. This is still all being built together as part of the CMMC. Again, 2020, the DFAR 7020 comes out. That gives DOD the right to assess contractors you know what, guys, are doing that today also. And we just had a client session, potential client, but somebody that we did not guide until this point. And he did a self-assessment under 7019. His contract required him to. He's a current manufacturer for the government. Did a self-assessment, and he said, you know what? There are 110 controls right now, as 171 is written. I got a perfect score. We would caution anyone from saying that, because guess what happened under... DFAR 7020, the DOD said, knock, knock, we'd like to verify your perfect score. So this is happening today. This is happening even though the CMMC is just finishing rulemaking and it's technically not implemented, a lot of the parts of it are. These things are happening right now. You need to make sure your system, your clients are, and MSPs that applies to too, are compliant to an extent that the DOD might come knocking on your door as they are right now. So as much as CMMC, people are saying, oh, it's never going to happen, or now some are saying it's going to happen, but we got two years. Not really. There are people that are literally submitting these self-assessments and getting a knock on the door to say, that's great. I'm glad you scored an A+, plus, a perfect score. We just like to peek under the hood a little bit and make sure you did. And this can result, and Kelby's going to talk about this too, this can result in a nice letter from the Department of Justice if it looks like you really took this in the wrong place. You just blatantly flat out ignored the evidence that showed you weren't compliant or you just didn't care. I that, I don't do that stuff. That's my IT department. Don't, you know, don't look at me. Well, you you signed it. So this has become fines. This has become um, DOJ, the Department of Justice, getting interested in who you are. So just be careful, guys. 2020, continuing on this path, uh, the DFAR 7021 now says there would be third-party assessments under the CMMC. This is going to be flowed down. So again, your subcontractors, anybody else, is going to have that same third-party assessment under CMMC. Um, 
that they have to comply with. There's there's no way to get around it. If you want to do business, this is what you have to do. In 2021, and this was kind of an infamous release, CMC 2.0 came out. The DOD was super quiet about it. They took your 1.0 comments. Everybody's just chugging along. I actually was hired to start working on writing the book on CMC 1.0 and 2.0 released. And it's like, wait, what? Who, who said that? So the rulemaking, uh, the DOD started rulemaking for 2.0 and they said, give us two years. And this was in fact, November, 2021. Give us two years and this will be uh, the law of the land. The rulemaking will be done. They can condense it. They said, we listen to you guys, condensed it to three levels. Level one is now gonna do their own self assessments. And then here's your assessment guide. Assessors get up to speed because this is the path we're going on. No looking back. They actually started Joint Surveillance Voluntary Assessments, JSVA as we call them, started shortly after, which means the DOD is working with us as assessors to go in and do these assessments right now under a voluntary basis. What does that mean? Some people said, I raise my hand, I wanna go in and be voluntarily assessed now so I can just get this behind me. And the DOD said in, in return for that, we'll go ahead and give you some extra time. Thank you for doing it early. And there are all kinds of other incentives to do it now, including, or then and now, including it's cheaper. You don't have a line that goes around the block and you can literally hang a shingle out and say, I passed. And you won't be able to stop the business because how many people are looking for somebody who's already certified? So that started and it's been a popular option. 2023, as DOD said would happen, right on the two year mark rulemaking finished. I wish I could tell you today they posted it. We look every single day to see if possibly 2.1, the final version, not the leaked version is out there. It's not there today. It might be this afternoon. It might be next week. No, nobody anticipates this going longer than just no, like another week or two. So we're done. 2.1 is in its final version, a matter of us reviewing what it says, but most of us have a pretty good 95% idea of what's in there. And we'll talk about that. And then what they also said just in this month is, okay, proposed rule status, meaning we're gonna take feedback one more time. You guys already did it once, one more time. I'm gonna listen to you guys for 60 to 90 days, and then we're gonna implement. So it's we're still, the train is moving down this track. We're still, um, going full speed. All they're going to do is listen to public comments for 60 to 90 days. They may incorporate uh, changes. They may not. There's no timeline at, after that that says this is exactly what it looks like. So we'll talk more about that too. This is not something that DOD is not doing. For any of those people out there that said Siemens C is not going to happen, put them back under the table. They're done. <laughs> timeline. No better time than the present to talk about this. Here's what we know. The DOD considers it's urgent for all the reasons we just talked about. The rule finalized in 2024. We're done. Um, SPURS has already been integrated in contracts. What's that? The Supplier Performance Review System, which means all those 171, NIST 171 controls, there are exactly 110 of them right now. They're already in contracts. This is exactly what got that team in trouble that we started um, talking to. They were required under the contract to do their own self-assessment. They scored themselves a perfect 110 mm -hmm. and they got a knock on the door. So that's already in contracts. Finally, um, what we expect from uh, publication is at the latest January, but really anytime now in the next week or two. What is happening right now? Um, some people are saying, well, it may not be implemented for many more months, maybe another year, you never know. That's not what the reality is. Prime contractors are already getting certified and they're saying with them, if you want to be my subcontractor, go get certified now. And there's a reason. There are huge teeth in CMMC. Aside from you can go to jail and get fined millions of dollars, you can lose your contract. You could be banned forever if they find out you were negligent uh, or misleading the DOD in some way. Never work for the federal government again. And you can instantly lose your contract if your subcontractor isn't as compliant as you are. 
So if your subcontractors out there, well, I got a little bit of time, you know, DOD is not official yet. Somebody needs to give them a swift kick in the butt because if the prime is d bidding on this, they have to show that you are also certified. And if somehow you, again, were negligent or whatever, and you go down as their subcontractor, the prime goes down and they hate that. that that's now to the tune of millions of dollars. So no subcontractor, no prime should sit here and think, I got all kinds of time. The time is now. Um, Sorry the, to interject, uh, Chris, but Chris please. and I were recently in D.C. and we were meeting with a number of these primes that Chris is mentioning, and they are seeing this as a requirement for their subcontractors because they will be personally liable from a financial position as well as, as Chris mentioned, from a Department of Justice perspective uh, for all of their supply chain. And as a result, we are seeing that subs are losing contracts with those primes if they cannot attest to their SPURS score as well as where they're at um, along that CMMC 2.0 journey. They've already personally stated that they will be requiring this as a vendor onboarding requirement for new contracts. So it's really important not just these primes focus on CMMC 2.0 certification today, but also subprimes because you can lose those relationships Relationships that you've built over years with the prime contractors. Yep. And for anybody who wants to be an upstart, now's a good time. If you want to go get certified, it is the best time in the world to get certified and hang out a shingle. You're going to find yourself with lots of business. So we have some cautionary tales. Some of it I've already alluded to. Um, one of the first things to think about is we um, are seeing a 60 to 90 day comment period that the DOD may incorporate into comments, uh, incorporate comments into the CMMC rule, or they may not. So after 60 to 90 days, there's no guarantee how far this is going to go. But nobody thinks it's going to go longer than a year. It's most likely months. The DOD has said, we're anxious about this. When we say two years for rulemaking and they hit two years on the mark, they're very timely. And they already went through, keep in mind, one comment period before this. So they listened to everybody. The Small Business Association weighed in and gave their blessing. There's not much more to say. So we think after 60 to 90 days, buckle in. This is going to be a fast ride. Second thing we need, um, we know is the ESPs are going to be um, certified, and that's here. We're looking at you, MSPs. So, anybody who wants to service these contractors, you need to go get certified. And it's quickly being adopted in other countries Canada, UK, Israel, Japan, as we discussed. So, great opportunity. Get your ducks in a row now. This thing is going to get pretty fast in a matter of months. Looking for that here. There we go. Thank you. Um, last slide for my talking for a while. You guys are welcome, Kevin. Um, what we think you need to think about the most is this is a process that the DOD cares a lot about. You need to be well advised. This is not something that you read a book and you're in a good place. You, in my opinion, strong opinion, you should have somebody at a CCP or CCA level of training. Again, that's certified CMMC professional or certified CMMC assessor. Uh, our team is, there are others out there. There are only 42, I think the number is, that can technically do assessments today, but get somebody with a lot of experience. And you can find that at cyberab.org forward slash, well, just go to cyberab.org, look on the marketplace. You need people to help you with everything, including even your Spurs score, because they're not taking that lightly. They will come and visit you, DIPCAC, is the DOD, that's their entity that comes and assesses, and the DOJ. These people are the last people you want knocking on your door, so just take that to heart. What the DOD has said as maybe a uh, concession, build it into your price. If you're in this space, and that, that applies to you too, as offers to the CMMC community, to the DIB, build it into your price. The DOD knows it's gonna cost more but it's cheaper than handing over 500 billion a year to our, our um, enemy countries. So 
you know, one of the greatest things you can do as MSPs, and we've seen this already, is say, well, let me come up with a package that it was more than you've ever spent on our services before, but let's come up with a package that you guys can say, here's my fee. I know what I'm going to spend, what's going out the door, and they can build that into their, their bids and their contracts with the DOD. Another huge takeaway for MSPs, documentation is everything. One of the more outspoken assessors who had her company assessed, everybody who's an assessor eventually wants to have their company assessed so they can be a C3 PAO. She had it done, failed, and you're like, wait, somebody with the most, some of the most education in the country on assessments, documentation is critical. And it's not just, hey, I've got an SSP. If your client doesn't know what an SSP is, there's going to be a long journey. But an SSP doesn't get you there either. There are probably 30 to 40 documents totally, they're related to each other, but totally separate documents that your client's going to have to have and you will as well have to have if you're going to be certified um, to do business with the DIB. And the final takeaway is, don't wait anymore. Typical time and, and somebody with a lot more resources than Meerkat went uh, across the nation and, and did a national average 12 to 18 months to get fully implemented and ready for an assessor to come in. And then you knock on the door and there's a six month wait for a, an assessment today. In two months after some of the world wakes up and says, oh, I guess they are doing CMMC, that line is going to get longer. So Definitely, this is something that there's never a reason to wait another week or two. This is absolutely imperative that if you want to be in this space, you move forward today. Thank you guys. And any questions you guys have uh, happen, I would be happy to answer them toward the end. Thank you, Chris. That was a really great overview of CMMC. So now moving on to guidance for meeting CMMC. In respect to level one, I want to just quickly deep dive into uh, what solution play from the perspective of Microsoft would really come into this. Um, like Chris had said, CMMC maturity level one is the lowest of the CMMC certification levels. It requires and consists of basic cybersecurity practices of 17 security controls that are extracted from six security families. So. Access control is one of them. Four controls within this category point towards the 17. There's a second family identification and authentication. Two controls point to this. Media protection, one control. Physical protection, four controls. Systems and communication protection, two controls and system and information integrity for controls, which consist of the 17 in total that meet towards level one. Um, as per Microsoft guidance, when it comes to an organization that needs to sell it, satisfy the self-attestation compliance with level one, their guidance is to promote their Microsoft 365 business premium SKU set for organizations that fall under 300 users. Um, being that Defender for Business is included to help in uh, endpoint protection. And then Microsoft 365 E3, uh, based on you know, in features of Microsoft Intra ID, which was formerly Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Intune as uh, a second feature, and then additionally, the Defender product, whether it's uh, Defender for Endpoint within the Enterprise SKU or Defender for Business within the SMB SKU. There's a great technical reference guide uh, for level one, um, which places the Microsoft products on a placemat um, that is on the right side of the slide, but we're also going to have the link for you to review. Um, plus, you know, we do have reference to a really great third party playbook um, that we can also share at the end of this presentation, but this is just to set the context as to what's being currently guided by Microsoft in, in meeting at level one. To switch it over, um, I do want to bring in Brian to talk around guidance of meeting level two compliance. Great. Thanks very much, Brianna. I'm Brian Wayne. I'm the CEO here at XQ Message. So for um, CMMC level two guidance with Microsoft. 
Um, so this is the, as Chris mentioned, the second level, the advanced level. Um, something to think about, uh, like approaching CMMC level two or level one, is that right now, these uh, members of the defense industrial base, they need to be protecting their CUI no matter what, that controlled, unclassified information. Um, regardless of the requirements for CMMC, they're still liable for all of that data that they end up receiving. So uh, what we're going to talk about is not just the quickest and easiest and least expensive way to become CMMC level two compliant, but also just let's protect the CUI right away. Let's take that off the table, just take the data off the table. Um, level two, different than level one, instead of the, the self-assessment requires a certified third party assessment. Uh, there are 42 folks that can do that right now, Chris being one of them. Um, there are 110 controls within uh, CMMC at the moment. That also maps to 320 um, sort of subcategories that need um, actual documentation as well. Chris can talk a little bit about that afterwards as well. And then there are DFARS requirements as well. And we can send you documentation on uh, what's required there, both on uh, the commercial cloud and then on uh, GovCloud with uh, CMMC for GC achieved through GCC High. Um, this is impacting a massive amount of the defense industrial base. It's an incredible opportunity. So a thing to think about as an MSP is that um, you may not be able to resell GCC High, right? So if your clients decide to go with GCC High, you have the problem of um, not being able to retain those clients and service them if you can't actually uh, buy it or sell that that service. Um, and then once they become CMMC level two, or uh, you need to achieve CMMC level two yourself. Chris has made that point before. So on the whole, both based on the the, the primes and this and the subprimes within there, we're looking at three hundred thousand plus companies of the defense industrial base. Um, but this isn't a one size fits all approach. Every single company is going to be a little bit different. What, where are they uh, in this process? Um, there's a there's the initial assessment. Where are they um, with their current posture? Um, let's evaluate that. Let's install the initial uh, technical solutions that will help them protect their CUI. Let's and then the MSPs. You'll help them with the remediation as they move towards uh, CMMC and all the technical stuff that happens there. And Chris and other C3PAOs and RPOs can help them with the training and um, other requirements that are necessary to meet those 110 controls because they're not all technical controls. Um, so Microsoft government GCC high uh, is an option, especially if you're dealing with um, secret, top secret classified information that's going to be in GCC high. There's no way to avoid that. But if they're, they have uh, control unclassified and only that, there's there are options for uh, Microsoft commercial that were uh, with uh, business premium specifically. So integrations into Outlook, integrations into OneDrive, into SharePoint, into Active Directory, so that there isn't this massive lift and shift uh, that'll be required. Just moving to the next slide. So I'll talk a little bit about XQ message and how we help companies achieve um, CMMC level two uh, on commercial cloud. Uh, we want you to avoid that cost burden of not only the licensing of it, but then there are ongoing costs. And then if they move their, their data to GovCloud, on average, it's about 30% more uh, on a monthly basis just to maintain um, the data storage over there. Uh, it's incredibly cumbersome. There's a lot of uh, other restrictions around it. And some of the services that and basic functionality that you may be looking for uh, with it and used to within uh, Microsoft Business Premium and uh, Microsoft Commercial are not available there. So there will be workflow changes. And I think any way that we look at it, I think with GCC, I mean, MCMMC, there's going to be workflow changes that happen. Um, so when we look at, and let's look for these little arrows, um, what are the current problems right now? Like how does XQ approach this? What are the, uh, the, the current issues that are out there with vulnerabilities? Um, businesses simply can't trust the applications, the networks, the computers, um, the identity management that they that they use right now. Um, these applications and these networks are not great stewards of that data at the moment. Um, this is because the 
security and the compliance is often tied to the environment itself. It's tied to this computer, this network, um, this server, right? And when the data flows outside of that, the security is often lost, as is the compliance. This opens um, up institutions, organizations to insider threat, credential compromise, hijacked sessions. Uh, the State Department was just hacked uh, by um, a hijacked token of one of their engineers' laptops brought to another computer, logged in, exfiltrated 60,000 um, emails. Funny thing about that is that it was the, well, funny is a matter of relevance, right? But the, the Chinese actually hacked the um, US-China diplomat. <laughs> so a little bit of a meta attack there, kind of interesting. Um, but this happens because there's one key, there's one credential, there's not a, another um, way to separate out the data from the uh, credentials so that when if someone gets in, someone gets that admin password, they're able to take all that information and exfiltrate it out and uh, jeopardize uh, the government's interests and the US's interests. So again, looking for this little arrow, there we are. What does XQ do differently? So we deliver real-time compliance and security wherever the data flows. Um, we do this through data encapsulation. So anytime that you're looking at uh, a data object, whether that's an email, whether that's a file, an IoT transmission, a database entry, something that's up on your um, Azure cloud or on your local Windows file server, what we do is we wrap that in its own little bubble and we bind the data rights management to that data object and that travels with the, the data beyond the perimeter of a single environment. So it's not just tied to this environment, that little bubble travels to your vendors, to um, to your employees working remotely, um, to your clients as well. And if that data is exfiltrated, the data uh, and protection travels with it. Just moving to the next slide. So the way that we approach this, I'm sure that you've all heard of zero trust. So Palo Alto, uh, Zscaler, that sort of thing. This idea that we trust nothing, um, we verify everything, we track everything, we micro segment that access down to, um, in this case, the data object. So if we're thinking about it from like the traditional approach, it's generally about the the perimeter, right? The network edge, uh, not letting people get in. But once they get in, generally that's when the exfiltration would happen. So we protect at the data level, and in a way that segments out access to say that, hey, HRs are the only group that can access this data, this, uh, and or and perhaps over here I've got my IT group, but never the twain shall meet. IT doesn't have access to the HR data. Moving again to the next slide. What we offer is unique data object level encryption, right? So this fills the gaps in the data and the encryption and compliance lifecycle. This is uh, compliance and security across environments that travel with it. Every time that someone tries to access that data, we enter a log of who read it, when they read it, it can expire, and also where. And this is very unique to what we do. We that we geofence and geolocate the access to that data to say this data won't ever be accessible outside of the United States, for instance. And through that, we're able to provide data sovereignty and data res residency. And we are able to do this because each individual data object has its own unique credentials, its own unique key that's generated at the edge and encrypts that data before it ever reaches the application, before it ever reaches Outlook, before it ever reaches OneDrive. That way, if the laptop is lost, your data is still safe. If there's credential compromise through phishing, your, uh, your Outlook email information is still safe. If there is um, an insider threat, an exfiltration that they try to access that from another um, area, your data is not accessible outside of um, those that secondary uh, protection that we offer. And with that, I'm actually going to turn it over to Kelby to go into a deep dive about meeting compliance uh, for CMMC with Microsoft Business Premium. Great. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to figure out the controls that everyone was having challenges with. I may defer to Brianna's help with this, but uh, as 
Chris and Brian have mentioned, there are a number of ways that your clients can accomplish CMMC 2.0 for, uh, for level two. And there are some challenges with some of those uh, solutions out there that XQ really goes above and beyond meeting and exceeding those challenges and those requirements in order to accomplish CMMC 2.0 in the most time effective and cost effective manner so that your customers can meet that requirement ahead of the CMMC 2.0 certified third party assessment organization attesting that this organization has met these requirements, which will be required in order to maintain existing contracts and bid on new contracts uh, come the end of the year. And so what the uh, XQ solution has done is we've actually partnered with Microsoft Business Premium in order to offer a solution that's compliant. So turnkey Microsoft 365 Business Premium and XQ's integration helps meet 77 of the 110 controls. We then work with partners like yourselves, MSPs, RPOs, and certified third-party assessment organizations like Chris in order and Meerkat in order to attain all 100 110 controls in the most time effective and cost effective manner. As Brian mentioned, because of the unique way that we approach uh, data security, we're able to deploy this technology on commercial cloud. And that's a really big uh, point that we need to highlight because some of the other solutions that are available to clients for level two as well as level three, so things like GCC High, for some clients, they may not be the best solution. They can be, uh, you know, a time, uh, take a little bit more time in order to get on board. There's a extensive migration cost in order to move to that. But the one, biggest challenge is that those environments are closed environments. So for those customers of yours that are on uh, only working with the DOD and only having to communicate with the DOD, GCC, GCC High is a fantastic option. However, you'll often have clients that have commercial clients as well as work with the DOD. If they want to maintain communications with both of these uh, subsets, these organizations will have to have dual licenses if they do go on GCC High. What that means is you'll have to segment these organizations into a GCC High environment, as well as have a commercial Microsoft license. So it's more expensive and it's more time extensive in order to get into those environments. What XQ offers through our partnership with Microsoft 365 Business Premium is a solution that enables organizations to maintain their uh, investment in commercial cloud so they can stay on Outlook just as they're currently using. They use an XQ additional solution on top of that that my colleague Trine will demo for you later today. They're using the products that they are used to, that they love. They're not having to do additional training and they're able to communicate both with the DOD as well as their commercial clients. So ultimately, XQ's relationship with Business Premium enables you to get clients compliant at, at the most cost effective way, but also in a time efficient manner, which is exceptionally important as we're looking at CMMC 2.0 becoming a requirement in contracts. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. So I've gone over a couple of these benefits, but just to underscore for CMMC level two, this is any organization within the dead that is uh, dealing with critical infrastructure. The majority of organizations that are in the defense industrial base will be required to attain CMMC level two, which is where you'll have a certified third party assessment organization like Meerkat Cyber come in and ensure that you have all of the evidence required to show that you're meeting those 110 controls outlined in NIST 800-171. We are able to add a solution to Microsoft Business Premium that enables your customers to stay on commercial cloud. So you're able to avoid not only the time burden of moving to a product like a GCC High or a government cloud, but you're also able to reduce the cost burden that some of those other solutions provide. So this is really an exceptional product for those small, medium-sized organizations that have both government contracts as well as commercial clients. 
we are, as a result of staying on commercial cloud, we're able to recognize up to a 10 times cost savings to some of those other solutions out there because you're not having to invest in a full migration to a government cloud. You're not having to invest in training those employees on a new product. You can deploy this product in days as opposed to months. Lastly, XQ's partnership with Microsoft Business Premium enables organizations to get compliant six times faster than other solutions. We do this by building off of the solutions that your customers already know and love and not requiring those customers to do any additional migration, et cetera. We've partnered with certified third-party assessment organizations like Meerkat Cyber in, a in order to ensure that the path to accreditation is easy, not only for the C3PAO, but also for those managed service providers and systems integrators that work with us to deploy XQ alongside the C3PAO to ensure that they're meeting those 110 requirements. So what we've done with Meerkat is we've actually created a shared responsibility model that outlines per control what is required by the organization, by the managed service provider, what technology providers like XQ enable, and what platforms like Microsoft enable. So this is a really great guide that we're able to provide our partners in order to get your customers from non-compliance to compliance in the fastest way possible. Next slide, please. If I may interrupt as you change slides, one of the things that I, I think is important to mention is this opportunity with XQ and Microsoft is um, something that came to me a year and a half ago. I, I saw XQ's technology. It was, it was introduced to me by somebody who said, hey, this might be kind of interesting to you. And it was fascinating. They are offering something that I think is non-existent anywhere else. And they have this patented and there's some reasons for that, but they also really are listening. And whenever there's uh, somebody in the CMMC space who knows what they're talking about, and that's, that's few and far between, they'll go back and say, hey, we can, we can address that. Let's make that happen. So this is such impressive technology. Now, I'm not a shareholder. I don't, I don't get anything for saying this. This is such impressive technology for us that we've said, 100%, that's what we're going to implement ourselves as we go through the C3PAO process, as we advise other clients. The Microsoft platform plus XQ checks all those boxes and I think does so perfectly in, better than anybody else is doing it out there. So I'm excited to be able to listen to and be a part of this panel because I think th what you're seeing is the cutting edge technolo technology at a time when we really need cutting edge technology. Make this less expensive, make it faster. And uh, MSPs, again, for you guys, opportunity for you guys to not only get in this space and use this technology, but also to come up with your own solutions to advise this, this space. This, this is just going to blow up. And these guys grabbed it by the horns and put out a product that I think is the best out there. Thank you so much, Chris. I know that you're not you're a welcome. shareholder, but I'll make sure to Venmo you that that yeah. cash for that uh, 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 point that you just made. Thank you so much. Uh, but I think it's a really good point that you bring up. And actually, Daniel, at the start of this panel, brought up the unique challenges that small, medium-sized organizations that make up the majority of these 300,000 defense industrial-based suppliers uh, that supply to the DOD have. And it's just, they aren't oftentimes don't have the technical resources that some of those large primes have. That's why they rely on organizations like managed service providers. They don't have the technical expertise often to deploy other solutions. So let's build a solution that is built within the environment that they are used to, that they can use today, and that doesn't take 18 months to deploy. Also, cost is a really big sensitive factor here. We are concerned that the defense industrial base 300,000 organizations, some of those just won't be able to meet CMNC 2.0 requirements with existing products that are on the market today. So this XQ product, it is a SaaS solution. So the customer pays a monthly cost. There is no migration cost, which with some of those other solutions can be exceptionally expensive. And we're able to keep costs for the supply chain of the DoD as low as possible. And that's really important as we're looking to protect US interests moving forward. Now, 
With CMMC 2.0, it's really about protecting the controlled unclassified information via communications channels, as well as where you're storing that CUI. And so we use two products from the XQ product suite that, as Brian mentioned, is a whole new approach to security. Instead of securing that environment, we secure every unique file, every unique email, every frame of video, every IoT transmission with a unique encryption key and associate policies in order to be able to access that data. And so we have two products that we integrate into your customer's regular workflow in order to accomplish this. We have integrations into Outlook. Uh, so this enables your customers to compliantly communicate CUI uh, across outside of Outlook environments. It doesn't just have to be within that closed environment that some other solutions provide. Uh, and now you can really control that controlled and classified information, even when it's outside of your physical possession. Uh, in addition to this integration, built into every XQ product, we have the forensic level auditability. So what that means is every time data is accessed, even if there is attempt of access, it is tracked who's accessing the data, where that data is being accessed, when the data is being accessed. This goes above and beyond a lot of products out there, not only seeing that we're providing the security, but now you have the proof, those logs that can flow into products like Seams, et cetera, uh, that enable you to actually provide the proof that that controlled unclassified information has not been accessed outside of the partners that you're already authorized to share that with. Lastly, storage of CUI is really important for CMMC 2.0 level two. And so we have integrations with OneDrive, SharePoint, as well as Azure Blob Storage that enable your customers to continue using those platforms that they're already used to and comfortable using, but now in a compliant fashion. And my colleague Trine is going to walk through the demo that really will open your eyes to how easy this can be for your customers. But the big takeaway here is that for the basic CMMC 2.0 uh, products, the communications integration as well as the cloud storage integration are what you can offer your customers for an easy CM to easily accomplish CMMC 2.0, those 77 controls. And then we partner with you as well as a certified third party assessment organization like Meerkat in order to deploy some of those non technical solutions to meet CMMC 2.0. Next slide, please. Thanks, Brianna. So really, uh, at the end of the day, some of the key takeaways that you want to take from the XQ partnership with Microsoft is that this partnership ensures that data and controlled unclassified information is only accessed by those that should be accessing that data, but is also able to be stored and transmitted via commercial cloud. Uh, this is a big point of differentiation from other products out there and ensures that your customers are not going to be, uh, you know, liable to some of the DOJ false claims acts, et cetera, that we are consistently seeing becoming more and more of an issue as more you know, punity arises from organizations saying that they're meeting the 110 controls, even defined today that they may not actually be meeting uh, the XQ product really what we're doing differently is instead of protecting an environment as brian mentioned like an email server what we're doing is we're uniquely protecting every transmission of data as well as data stored in the cloud and what this enables is there is no lateral movement so if someone gets into your microsoft environment they're not able to access that controlled unclassified information and you're still able to prevent against a cmmc 2.0 breach uh, XQ provides that heightened trackability, that forensic level logging of who's accessed your data, when the data has been accessed, where it's been accessed. We even identify if someone's attempting to access that data who has not and enable managed service providers to now provide an additional service to their customers by uh, mitigating some of those flagged events and uh, really improving the security posture of their customers. Lastly, 
We enable organizations to maintain compliance even when their data, those communications at CUI, is not within their physical possession. It's easy to protect, you know, controlled and classified information if it's in your physical possession. But what happens when you share it with a partner and that partner becomes breached? With the XQ technology, even if a partner were to become breached, you would be able to help those customers ensure and mitigate against a breach themselves and not have any infractions when it comes to NIST 800-171. Awesome. Next slide, please. Do we want to take a break and uh, maybe go to try and to do the demo? That, that was uh, my hope. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Kelby. Um, so just before I kind of get into it, I want to highlight a few points that Brian and Kelby made previously. So one thing that we do uniquely different from existing te technology out there is we provide the end user all the necessary tooling in place to encrypt data themselves directly on their edge device. So this these encryption protocols kind of fall on NIST 1-800-171, so they're fully FIPS validated encryption algorithms, and these are utilized to encrypt all of your data that you're communicating directly on your edge device. I'll quickly share my screen, uh, but today I'll go into a couple different products as Kelby was highlighting. So the first of which being our communication suite, which is a layer on solution to existing Outlook. And then additionally to that, I'll kind of go into our vault solution, which is our data encryption at rest product. Um, so with this, as I was kind of highlighting that all the encryption happens on the edge device, we as a company have no insight into any of the data that you're actually encrypting. We merely provide all the necessary tooling in place for you to encrypt and decrypt that data directly on the fly. Uh, the only thing that we do store are the keys and policies associated with that data, but to kind of add on to this, our entire back end is fully containerized. So for clients that want to that increased level of control, they can fully deploy their entire key store themselves and host that themselves directly within their existing infrastructure. Um, with that being said, I'll go directly into our Outlook products. So this is a layer on solution to existing Outlook, and we try to keep it as simple as possible for the end user. Um, so they can craft the emails they normally would, add attachments as normally would, so nothing really changes from their perspective. Uh, here, they'll just hit the send button. One thing you'll see on mine that typically doesn't happen in a general setting is you'll see this notification of whether or not you want to send an encrypted. In a general setting, there'll be policies in place, which I'll show a little bit later, that guide the user a specific direction. So for example, if you're controlling CUI data, this will force encryption upon that data. So the user won't necessarily have to decide on their own. This will be an administrator policy that's put into place. Uh, with this, the moment that I hand I hit the send encrypted email button. What's actually happening again is my device will actually encrypt all of this data within this email. So this is the full body of the email, as well as each individual attachment with a unique encryption key, then transmit that over its general communication channels, which in this scenario is kind of that Office 365 environment. And the user in the receiving end will receive an email that looks something like this. Uh, so just keep in mind, uh, this email template is fully white labeled. Uh, so all the logos and imagery can be changed around this email. Uh, for the end user perspective, I, if you receive an email that looks something like this, all they would have to do if they have the add-ins is simply hit this read this message to execute a look at add-in. What that's going to do is the exact same process in reverse. So your device will actually authenticate you as a user of the key store, request access to this specific key associated with this specific email. If you're set as one of the recipients for this specific encrypted data, you'll be able to retrieve that key back and then decrypt all the contents of this email directly on the edge device itself. Additionally to that, you can just simply click the attachments here. That'll decrypt and download the attachments on the fly. Uh, a common question that we get pretty often is, what do I do if I don't have any of your attachments directly installed? Uh, we do provide quick and easy kind of options to install those within the actual email itself, but kind of a third option to that is you can go directly and read this message to the portal. What this is, is this is very similar to what you guys are used to on banking platforms. Here is already authenticated on a separate tab, but what this will do is it'll push you through a full authentication flow. So you'll all have to authenticate yourself as the user that received that email. Uh, you'll go through kind of 2FA authentication, and then you'll be able to decrypt and read the contents of this email here. Additionally to that, any files associated with this email, will you can decrypt and download it in the decrypt file section. Um, but as you can kind of see on my display here, 
I have multiple other options on the left hand side here. Uh, this is not common for a typical user. This is mainly just because I have administrator access to this specific team. Uh, but as Kelby highlighted, one of the niche items of our platform is the ability to track and log your communications. So here, for example, if I go into the communications section, I drill down into that individual item. Uh, so this demonstration email that I sent, you'll notice you get a full compliant log of full kind of who, what, where, when for each individual access of this specific item. Uh, so here you can see I viewed this email from this specific time at this specific location. Um, Additionally to that, this was built with integrations in mind. So if you guys have clients that use third party seams such as Splunk, uh, this can integrate directly within those platforms and you can track and monitor all of these logs directly within those platforms. And you can also get kind of um, any malicious access attempts and you can drill down into those specifically, which I'll go into a little bit later. Uh, but additionally to that, within this portal itself, you can go into the policy section. So this allows you to control those policies as I previously highlighted. These can get extremely granular and they typically are for CMMC. So if your email contains specific labeling or specific information, you can force encryption upon the end user. Additionally to that, if this email is going to a specific domain, you can also force encryption for those specific emails. And kind of the last option is you can also geo-restrict data. Uh, so you can restrict access to specific data within specific countries, for example, for CMMC, that being the kind of United States. Here I'll do the inverse of that just because I'm located in Canada. Uh, so here I'll actually activate a policy that restricts access from the United States and Canada. Uh, so once I initiate this policy into effect within the portal itself, if I attempt to do that exact same flow I was doing before, so go to my email that I just sent here, and attempt to actually decrypt the contents of this email on the fly, you'll notice that I get an error, and this is kind of my device's inability to actually request and grab that decryption key associated with this data, and it'll inform me that access to Canada United States has been blocked by administrator, and the administrator will get notification and they can rectify that situation. Um, additionally to that, as I quickly turn off this policy, um, on the right hand side here, you'll notice that we do have a number of off the shelf policy packs that we're building upon. Uh, so in order to quickly kind of integrate CMMC into your management portal, you can quickly add these kind of policy packs on the right hand side here. This will automatically create kind of the base layer of the policies required for CMMC, but you can add additional policies to that by recommendation of your C3PA. Um, additionally to that, in the communication sections, you have the ability to rectify situations. Uh, so for example, with this email that I sent previously, if I've identified a threat within my system, for example, I typically access data from British Columbia, Canada. Now all of a sudden I'm attempting to access data from Romania, which is where I'm originally from. Uh, the administrator will get immediately notified that an access attempt has been made outside of your typical usage. So this is a notification from our platform itself. But what you can do in that situation is you can drill down into the data item itself and revoke access. So what this does is we provide two options for this. So first of which is it'll completely destroy decryption key associated with this email, essentially rendering it digital dust. And the second of which being it'll just suspend access temporarily until administrator goes in and rectifies the situation. So this can be done on a per item basis or it can be done on a per user basis. So you can just revoke a whole user's access if you've identified that their credentials have been compromised here. Uh, once I initiate that here, you'll notice that it does say this item has been revoked. And now if I attempt to do that same exact flow again, very similar to policies and attempt to actually decrypt the contents of this email, you notice that here it'll inform me that this message can no longer be decrypted. And that again is my device's inability to actually request and grab that decryption key associated with the data. I'll kind of switch gears here just slightly and go into our uh, data storage, our REST product. Uh, so that kind of covers your communication suite. So that enables you to send encrypted emails back and forth. Um, these can contain CUI and ensure that you do encrypt all of that data with the necessary encryption algorithms that are required and fit under that NIST 1-800-171. Um, with this, so this next product allows you to connect any target destination. Uh, so this can be kind of your OneDrive, Dropbox, et cetera, as well as any kind of local storage solution. So you can connect to your local file system and kind of your third option being that object oriented space. So you can connect your Azure blobs in this scenario. Uh, 
what this enables you to do is you can quickly connect those target directories. So here I'll do an example with my OneDrive solution on the left hand side here. This is within a SharePoint environment. Uh, so I can quickly connect that target destination. What this is going to do is it's going to spin up a virtual file share that looks identical to your local file system. Uh, so I'm currently running this on a Mac. We do have applications that are identical to this flow for as well as Windows, Mac and Linux. Uh, so in this, the end user, they can interact with data as they normally would within this platform. So for example, here, if I want to upload this CUI.txt into this area, what that'll do, same process as our communication suite. So your device will actually encrypt that file itself directly on your device itself before it's stored within the target destination. That being this OneDrive solution on the left-hand side here. So you'll notice that all of the data that's actually stored within OneDrive is stored in encrypted format. You can kind of identify this by that .xqf extension here. So all of these data items are fully encrypted at rest. And the only time they're ever decrypted is when you're interacting with data directly on the client side. And all of this data can be interacted using your typical applications that you're normally used to. So for example, the CUI.txt, I can just use my text pad as I normally would, make all the same edits I normally would. And then the moment I save it, it'll just re-encrypt and store it within its target destination again. Um, kind of one additional piece to this is we have this restricted on a per group basis. So for example here, you can see within this team that I have a couple different groups. So I have an HR group. I'm currently authenticated with this bottom user here. So I'm part of the HR group. You can segregate groups into multiple different options and this integrates directly within AD. Uh, so you don't have to manually create groups in a different system all over again. Uh, you can actually just synchronize those directly with your AD. That'll set up all your groups and your necessary licensing directly within our platform itself as well. Um, with this, if I switch over, for example, to a user that's part of the IT team, which is kind of a big question now, is how do I restrict access from my IT administrators of very confidential data that I currently have in my platform? Or if you just want to use our platform for all of your users, but set up a group just specific to CMMC clients, you can do so within this as well. Um, so here, for example, now I've authenticated with the IT administrator. And for some reason, the IT administrator could this happens a lot, actually has access to the same exact directory as those kind of CMMC users. Uh, but for them specifically, if I connect this target location, for example, same exact location, you'll notice that this throws me an error and just notifies me that I don't have access to one or more files within this target destination. So if I attempt to actually access that data, so for example, I'll just attempt to access this kind of HR data here. Um, you'll notice that it throws me an error, even though I am accessing it through Vault. And this is kind of that recipient's lock associated with this data. So my device is, again, unable to grab that decryption key and be able to decrypt that data, even though I am an IT administrator and I can actually see that data. Um, so that way it helps you kind of segregate your groups and control your CUI for a specific subset of users within your company. If I can jump in here for just just a second. Hey, Chris, can I ask you to comment on that as well? And why that's so important, the ability to separate out admin access from data access and separate that out from, you know, on the SharePoint and Microsoft admin side from like the XQ or the, another control plane. I was, you must have read my mind. I was chomping <laughs> to, to weigh in. Um, this is what makes this platform exciting because we are looking at um, how can we deploy this with Microsoft Commercial Platform. You can do it with this by restricting access and Microsoft can't see it. So if I have CUI, I'm, I'm Daniel's company or his family's company. <clears throat> I have a bunch of CUI on, my, CUI on my computers and I have to call Microsoft and say, I need support. Well, the DOD is, and the federal laws say support has to have background checks and US based and all this stuff. And Microsoft offers that at the GCC high level. If you want to get off of that platform, you might, they call it follow the sun support. And I'm, I learned that from my colleague, um, John Richards. Follow the sun means uh, India might pick up and say in, in their own special dialect, hey, we're here to help you. and how can I look at your sir, your uh, system and you want to share screens? That's a problem. So what, what XQ is doing resolves that problem completely 
they can't see the vault. There's nothing for them to view and you can install this. And it's not just that, you can install it and nobody in the US can see it that shouldn't be seeing it. If somebody gets a hold of the file and you're like, how, that, how did that ever happen? They can make this turn to dust. So it's an incredible amount of power. Nobody can forward an email from the old days and say, oh, look what I, I found. I found the CUI and, and suddenly somebody else has that. This in, that resolves that problem completely. So uh, anything else you want me to comment on? Otherwise, I can. I think that was great, Chris. Okay. Uh, the only other thing that I would mention is all of the solutions that are currently on the market uh, have challenges with these networks being uh, breached, right? Even the government solutions that are out there. So we're even seeing the DOD actually had recently, I think 60,000 communications breached as a result of those servers being breached. So even with the additional measures that organizations take, like only having access by US background check citizens and only maintaining access within the United States, you're still seeing breaches that XQ actually would have prevented against by splitting access to you know, Microsoft out of access to every individual communication. So to Chris's point, this is just another layer of security that prevents against insider threat, uh, against you know, vendor threats, as well as breaches from third parties. Snowden would have had a problem if they would have implemented XQ these documents would not have gone anywhere else. <laughs> I was waiting for that, Chris. Uh, <laughs> we'll get another Venmo. I'm just kidding. Awesome. Okay, back to you, Brian. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, so again, with this platform, you get that same level of control. All of the data access and everything is logged directly within our portal itself. As you can see, I've uploaded a couple of different files, but you, for each individual file, you get that same level of control. So the full who, what, where, when for each individual access for the specific data. Again, you have the same ability to manage and control policies. So here I can initiate a policy to block data access for all users from specific countries, and that can go into effect. And now when I attempt to actually do, even with that user that I was working on before, if I attempt to actually connect to drive and then actually access data, um, it'll throw me an error. For example, here it actually fully kicked me out of the platform because I don't have access to the specific platform itself uh, due to kind of that geo restriction that's put into place. Uh, so all the policies are checked uh, directly beforehand before any of the data can kind of be interacted with. Um, kind of additionally to this, I wanted to go into kind of that third option. Uh, so one of the big things that's been happening recently is a lot of companies tend to store a lot of confidential data within these kind of um, object oriented storage environments. So this will be your Azure blobs mainly or your Azure, your AWS S3s, my apologies. Um, so our platform allows you to connect directly to those third party storage platforms uh, such as your Azure blobs or AWS S3s and encrypt all the data going directly into those platforms very similarly to what I did with OneDrive itself. Um, so here I'll do kind of an example of that with my Azure blob environment just on the left hand side. I'll connect that drive. Again, you'll notice that these files look completely normal for the actual end user, uh, but all of the data. So here I'll do that same CUI.txt data. All of the data will actually be stored in encrypted state within the Azure blob itself. And you'll notice that all of this data is actually XQF. Ah, so it's all fully encrypted within these kind of object oriented storage environments. And as Kelby and Chris are highlighting, why this is super important now is because you're essentially separating out your key store from your data store. Uh, so these platforms do provide some measures of encryption associated with them, but you don't want your data and your key store to be all within the same exact platform itself. Because if you run into the unfortunate situation of your IT administrator getting compromised, a hacker could just immediately exfiltrate 100% of that data and just leak it out everywhere. Um, in this scenario, if they get access to, for example, your Azure blob and they pull out all of your uniquely encrypted files, they'll still have that insane amount of overhead of basically uniquely decrypting each individual file with those kind of brute force attacks. So it's that immense amount of overhead, at which point you'll also get notified within your management portal that access to this data has been made outside your typical usage. It'll prevent access and I'll notify you immediately so you'll get spammed with those kind of notifications and you'll be able to kind of rectify that situation there. And just to build on that a little, 
these additional consulting hours and services that you can provide to your customers that I originally mentioned, that's an example of these additional services that your customers uh, can benefit from, from a security perspective, from making sure that they're not breaching any of the requirements for CMMC 2.0, but it also enables you to have a stickier relationship with your customer and shine in the eyes of the customer, because now you can remotely revoke access to the data. So even if there was a breach, they're not, uh, you know, having to comply with things like ransomware, extortion, et cetera. You're taking that off of the table by having the ability to control access when that data is not in your physical possession. Brian, I see you wanting to mention something. I just, I just wanted to reiterate, we're looking at hundreds to thousands of hours for that MSPs can bill to clients for each one of these. And it's not just the initial um, you know, assessment and remediation period. Chris can also speak to the fact that this is an ongoing process. Every month you need to check in with them. Every quarter it needs to be reported back in. And these um, assessments are good for three years. So um, it's a great new revenue stream. It's a great way to be uh, more sticky with your clients. Chris, did you want to um, add anything to that? Absolutely. This I see as a relationship building opportunity more than anything else you guys have probably ever seen. There are going to be very few MSPs that want to go get certified and service this space. But once you're in this space, you can have these clients because they can't go just anywhere. They have to be in this space where an electronic service provider, an MSP, is certified. So your clients are not going to have a whole lot to go and check out um, in the competition. But secondly, you are going to have an ongoing monthly relationship because of the higher requirements where you're reporting back to them. XQ gives you all these these tools to report back and you, you are their lifeline in so many ways. So to be in this space and build a relationship, it may be a, a cost. It is a cost up front. Let's be frank. Everybody who's going to play in this space is going to pay up front, but it is longstanding and it is growing quickly. Thank you, Chris. So just to highlight a couple of the points that we've already raised, you know, these target customers, who are the target customers? As we mentioned before, the majority of the defense industrial base will have to be CMNC 2.0 accredited uh, by a C3PAO for level two. Uh, that's anyone that's dealing within critical infrastructure and reaching out to uh, Meerkat Cyber and other organizations that provide those services. They'll be able to help you identify what level is required. Uh, but as I mentioned, the majority of organizations will have to be level two certified. The XQ Microsoft Partnership, that can meet requirements for both level one and level two should you have a customer that needs to be level three and that really is the top five percent of the defense industrial base those large primes that deal with ultra secret information there are other microsoft solutions like a gcc high that you can offer customers but this uh, suite of products enables you to keep that relationship with your customer throughout the life cycle of their engagement with the dod if you have any customers that have mentioned their requirement for a government cloud, that is one of those key probing questions that highlight that they likely are looking at doing business with the DoD or are currently have a contract with the DoD and are investigating CMMC 2.0 solutions. Great way to bring up Meerkat and XQ and the Ingram suite of solutions via Microsoft. Any small and medium sized business that already does uh, business with the defense industrial base, not just direct business with the DOD, but any of those sub vendors that are handling CUI, they also need to be CMNC 2.0 compliant. And if you have any customers that currently have government contracts or are looking at getting into that space, we're currently working with a number of advanced manufacturing organizations that were doing advanced manufacturing in oil and gas and recently have seen that that same technologies, those same technologies that are using can be applied to some of the subcontractor requirements that the primes need for building specific tooling. 
Well, they also need to be CMNC 2.0 compliant, and it's a great opportunity for you to engage with those customers and really increase your footprint within the space. If you have any organizations that are currently managing healthcare uh, data or handling government data, so VA hospitals, for example, any suppliers to VA hospitals, they'll also need to be CMNC 2.0 compliant. And then, of course, uh, many companies that have state and local contracts, because those uh, state and local uh, bodies also work with the DOD, those organizations will need to be CMNC compliant. Lastly, Chris brought up a really good point, which is that today CMMC 2.0 is a, um, becoming a requirement for any organization that works with the DOD and any uh, supplier to those organizations working with the DOD. We have already had a handful of countries outside of the U.S. come out and state that they will be requiring CMMC 2.0. So that's another additional opportunity within places like Japan, UK, Canada, that you can extend your footprint as an expert within this space because, of course, the U.S. is what's generating these experts. So you can now extend your footprint outside of your traditional customer base. In addition to that, we're starting to already see signs from additional agencies in the U.S. that are stating that they will be requiring this as a requirement for vendors working with those agencies. A good example of that is uh, we're working with a large uh, organization that provides transportation services to the uh, DOT. And the DOT has already stated and come out to some of their large contractors that this will be a requirement down the road. So to Chris's point, by becoming an expert within CMMC and offering mm -hmm. a diverse suite of products, you now are able to expand your footprint and those engagements with your existing customers. Awesome. So I wanna move it into selling. Um, and here, I know a lot of the partners on the call are Ingram partners, but I wanna make it uh, super streamlined as to how you can engage XQ and their product line through our Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace. So similarly to how you purchase your Microsoft CSP licensing, the same way that you would purchase those licenses is the same way that you would find XQ in our marketplace. If you were to go into the search bar by quickly looking up either CMMC or XQ, um, you'll be met with XQ's portfolio of their Zero Trust data transfer, their CMMC compliance solution, which bundles their Zero Trust secure communications and data transfer, or sorry, Storage Vault product, um, their standalone product around Storage Vault, or their secure communications, which we did talk around earlier on. The way that you would purchase this product that was featured today on this call is if you were to go into the CMC compliance, you can see that both products are going to be combined here um, at an annual value or cost of $483, which is your MSP cost. Um, so that's the, the true easy way for you to self-administer, self-transact. And um, maybe I'll see if Brian, Kelby, you want to add something around this as well? What I would add is that we are here to help throughout the sales process. So as an organization, we support our partners throughout that sales process from the engagement with the client themselves, introducing the XQ product. Uh, incredible solutions architects like Tryon on the call will help demo the products and we support the entire sales process. So from introduction throughout onboarding that customer, we are here to make you look good and continue developing a stronger relationship with that customer base and also expanding that customer base. So you can directly engage and purchase through the Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace, as Brianna mentioned, but please feel free to reach out to myself. We'd love to onboard you as a partner, provide you additional documentation, marketing materials for your clients, and then really have a get you guys access to the licenses so you know the product. We are here to help you uh, make CMMC a big business driver for 2024 and uh, everything that we can do, we will do in order to do so. Awesome. So do you want to go into the cost? 
Of course. So as I mentioned earlier on, this is a SaaS based solution, so there are no migration costs or some of those one time costs that other solutions are uh, requiring of customers. I mean, we've seen bids from organizations that are saying they can get a company CMMC 2.0 compliant uh, in some of those other uh, environments for up to for a 50 person organization between 300,000 and a million dollars. That is just not cost effective for a lot of the defense industrial base. So how we've approached it is we provide the XQ CMMC 2.0 solution, a combination of our communication suite as well as our vault for $56 a seat per seat uh, per month, uh, which equates to around $672 a seat per year. As a managed service provider working through Ingram Micro, you are actually paid out a 20% commission for that seat on an annual basis. So this is, a, you can look at it almost as an annuity that continues paying because to Chris's point, these customers, once they are locked into a solution, they continue using these solutions for years and years and years. Uh, in addition to the XQ commission, you also are able to attain around a $40 per seat per year uh, commission from the Microsoft Business Premium Suite. So this is $174 that your uh, company can look at every seat as a value for getting them CMMC 2.0 compliant. In addition to this, Meerkat Cyber, who is our chosen certified third party assessment organization, uh, provides additional services for those assessments for that pre assessment work that you can build in commission as well. So this is going to be the last slide before we kick it into our Q&A, but I want to go into what uh, collateral, what enablement services, um, what pretty much value propositions Ingram can offer to our MSPs that are either in the space and want to scale out what they're currently doing or wanting to learn more about how to better adopt maybe the solution that we talked around for level two in integrating a Microsoft 365 business premium and XQ storyline. So talking first around demand generation, um, as we said, 300,000 organizations by 2025 is a large fee. Um, and in order to support our MSPs and better guiding that conversation, we are going to be helping partners drive customer forward events, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, that focus on Microsoft as a solution um, to meet CMMC 2.1. We are gonna be funding these events for MSPs to deliver in Q1 through Q2 of next year. Um, we do have a request that if you are interested in this level of funding, um, we'll have to have you register your event before December 31st of this year just to ensure that we have enough capabilities to support all partners with funding. Um, but essentially, once that's completed, we'll credit you in terms of your funding as marketplace credit for you to use for future purchases on our marketplace um, with the event that you have your attendee list, your presentation material, and the recording provided to us as proof of execution that you have delivered a CMMC webinar or event uh, reflecting on Microsoft 365 as the provided solution. So that's something that I, I'm ha very happy to bring to the table. When we move on to enablement uh, for MSPs that are looking to grow their practice, guidance for organizations that need to meet level two, right? We had XQ come on and showcase their product solution and making it more simple and delivering a commercial product leveraging Microsoft 365 Business Premium to meet that. Um, we do have a possibility, like Kelby had said, to provide a more white glove process for helping support you in terms of sales training, technical training, go-to-market planning, and supporting you in your first sales calls or helping you close your deals and output. So we do have an easy 30-minute link that goes directly into the calendars of XQ, um, who can further you know, clarify solution questions, go through a more in-depth technical demo uh, so that you can start sharing that product level to your greater team. After that, we do have also something very exciting for next year Q1, where if there's ambitions for you to appear and gain accreditation as a CMMC certified professional 
or assessor, so CCP or CCA, we are in taking partner requests that if you have one associate within your organization that wants to achieve either or, uh, we will have virtual instructor-led courses that are going to be within Q1 and Q2 of next year, um, provided by Edwards, which is a very qualified um, course for you to get um, and certify for these accreditations. They are typically five days long, and it's quite strict in that um, they will monitor whether your uh, staff is fully participating in the course. So it is quite strict of who we will select to be part of this program. Um, but like I said, the two things that we're bringing to market, support in your go-to-market effort, supporting your certifications, we have one consistent link that we're um, asking our MSPs to fill in. It's at bit.ly, so bit.ly slash cmmc-ingram, where we'll be accepting submissions up until December 31st. Uh, with the possibility of extending if we don't see the intake um, that we expect. I'm going to talk about documentation and pass it over to Chris, who's more familiar in this area. Thank you. And wow, by the way, um, Brianna, that was a curveball. I did not know you guys were actually sponsoring CCPs and CCAs from some of your partner MSPs. You guys jump on that. That's $10,000 plus value. And I'll quickly... Um, summarize a story that drives home why this is so valuable to you also advising your clients we as assessors we talk weekly about what's out there and who's um, seen what one of the biggest mistakes and it's early in the process was an eighty thousand dollar mistake by somebody who did not understand cmmc well enough to advise their client properly and they suggested a solution that did not provide a solution client had to undo all that their relationship with that MSP of course soured get your people out there and train to the extent you can this is uh, this is an awesome program the average assessor has spent 10,000 plus to get there um, back to the first point that Brianna brought up the speaking things if you guys need somebody to staff one of your CMMC events um, tap on one of us here and our speaking fee is um, brace yourself zero we're happy to come in and talk <laughs> and uh any one of the three of us will um, be glad to make a, an appearance and answer any questions for your your audience uh turning to the documentation which is what i'm supposed to talk about the technical reference guide for cmmc 2.0 so microsoft has put this out john has used this faithfully as he is our chief implementer Going in and really understanding every one of the controls is a huge undertaking. How do you implement this? And Microsoft can't implement all of them. Not all of them are about Microsoft technology, but to the extent they can, this is the number one guide right now that Microsoft offers. There may be some others out there, um, but Microsoft gives something that helps you understand how to implement each one of the controls. And each control, by the way, has objectives underneath that. We haven't even talked about those. There are 320 objectives at the end of the day, soon to be more. So this is a great reference for you guys to look at. I think the, the link is built into the slide deck. There is CMMC documentation from the DOD that may change as soon as today. So go to the link, which takes you to dodcio.defense.gov, and there's CMMC um, documents. And the reason I would send you to the link rather than send you a document is because, like I said, this is a fluid document. This is changing. Uh, there will be comments on it and maybe some more changes, but the next one will be mostly the, the it's our Bible for assessors. When there's a question, how do I do this? How do I implement this? I'm going to turn up, uh, I'm going to open up to the assessment guide that you'll find in that link. Finally, we have dabbled in this Microsoft Purview Compliance Manager or just Compliance Manager. Microsoft has uh, made a, a significant effort to try to help MSPs and anybody using their products with how in the heck can I get compliant? Uh, this is out there, just wanted to mention it. I think it's a work in progress because in part, CMMC is a work in progress. So check back in two weeks and it might be a totally new animal, but Microsoft is clearly making efforts to help um, you and your clients along on the process. And when you get in there and I, I consider myself fairly savvy with the computer and I get in there and I'm like, whew, 
there's there's a lot there. So um, Purview helps you and the compliance manager specifically helps you get through some of this and Microsoft's working on it. So I would encourage you to check that as your third tool for guidance you, you'd be looking for. I'm going to open it up to actually John and Daniel too, because you guys have been heavily embedded. Yeah, the only thing I would add on Purview, like Chris said, it, it's it's a work in progress. Um, it will be a great tool for an assessor to use once uh, when they go when they go in it, when when I think it's matured a little bit uh, because it, it's directly within the Microsoft environment. It takes you to the places where you can show your evidence uh, for compliance, um, and much like the secure store secure score works in um, in the uh, security admin center. It does a lot of calculations on its own um, to show you where you're at. So I would uh, definitely keep an eye on that. It's in the it's in the uh, compliance uh, admin portal. And you've said everything I was going to say. That's Great awesome. minds think alike. <laughs> So I know that we have 10 minutes left of our original two hours that we booked here. I do want to open up to questions. Uh, we do have still a few on the call, so I'm going to pause here. If there's any questions that you might have, there's an ability for you to go off mute and go on camera if you choose to do so and ask a few to our panelists today. Well, I'll go ahead and ask the group a question. How about that? Um, how many of the folks on the call today have existing clients that are have expressed an interest in CMMC or um, are in the defense industrial base? And um, second, second question, does that end up being in the um, in like manufacturing, um, in software, and other services? Uh, what are we seeing out there? Because maybe we can start um, answering a few of those questions based on um, more specific uh, examples. Manufacturing and DOD. Great, great. Yep, aerospace uh, manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, multiple commercial organizations servicing the DOD. Um, a lot of them are going to require level three in addition to level two compliance. Right. Right, um, that makes a lot of sense. And also, uh, we hadn't really touched on ITAR as well, but if you want to follow up with us, we can talk about um, ITAR compliance as well. We have a, um, a partner space lawyer um, that helps companies get through that. Um, if they need any direction or help, we complement um, ITAR as, as well. Chris, do you want to comment at all around manufacturing and the specific challenges you see there? Absolutely. So there's a lot of information exchange, and that's what you really need to be locked down with. And CMMC requires only certain, you have to identify who is it that's handling CUI, what's the flow of the CUI. Um, again, one of the reasons that I continue to be impressed with XQ is you can really clamp that down. Oh, my CEO is traveling. Um, so I know if there's somebody opening this up in India, it's not my CEO who happens to know he's traveling because he wasn't going to India. So there's all these ways that you can monitor and um, control data, which is critical right now going through the CMMC process. That's that's what this is all about. How are you controlling your data? I would add one other fact. So we're talking about the base deployment for XQ and how that supports achieving CMMC 2.0. For some of the industries that uh, a couple of the partners on the call today mentioned their clients work within, um, we're seeing that there's also a requirement for IoT devices. So in advanced manufacturing, for example, a lot of times the CAD solutions are actually ingesting CUI. Uh, we have integrations that enable that CUI to be compliantly ingested uh, into these IoT devices without breaching CMMC 2.0. Uh, so please feel free to reach out and we'd love to share how we've helped this with other advanced manufacturing and uh, vertical specific organizations. Just with uh, respect to time, Megan, I see your hand is up, so I'd love to hear from you, uh, a great partner of XQ's. 
Oh, thanks. I actually forgot to just take my hand down, but I just oh. wanted to say thank you. You you guys did a really great job. Um, I'm happy to hear that you're working with Edwards. That's who provided me with my CCP certification, and I think I think they I think they do a really great job. So um, that's news to me, and uh, it's just a very exciting venture. So I look forward to working more closely with you and and your team to help these commercial defense customers with a solution that. Um, I think it's just going to be a lot more, it's going to be a lot more um, simple than, and a lot less expensive than the uh, GCC high migration, which I think is the understanding that most believe is like the only, the only way to go. Um, so I, 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 yeah. I know we have, I know we have some work ahead of us from a, um, you know, overcoming objections because that community is, is GCC high or bust, um, but I know we can do it. <laughs> so. And Thanks. on that note, Megan, uh, we have shared responsibility models, uh, matrices about how various organizations here today, so C3PAOs, RPOs, MSPs, what role they play within this, and um, that we're happy to share uh, to help you with those <coughs> conversations in addition to Absolutely. As Chris mentioned, we are here to help you guys in these conversations from a speaking engagement perspective, as well as from engaging directly with the customer. So also, I'd like to um, add that we will set up anyone on the call with um, free trial accounts as well for any of the software. You should be we want to get this in your hands, get you to be uh, comfortable with it, make sure that you um, feel good about recommending it as well. The first step is just getting you to understand it. If you have more complex um, environments that you want to talk about some of those solutions databases CADs, file servers whatever else we um there, there are more in-depth solutions that we can help you with there as well uh one thing i saw that adam phillips that you had your hand up for a little bit and maybe you got tired of he keeping it up did, did you have any questions that you wanted us to address okay it looks like we answered adam's um <laughs> And, and Brian, you actually answered Keith's question, which is, is there a NFR license for trialing? Um, I've put my email into the chat. Uh, please reach out and we will get you guys free licenses. We find that it's oftentimes the best way to uh, really get you guys to understand the value of the product. Shell, I see your hands up. I'll pass it off to you. Great, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say that we've been working with XQ and, and with Chris and his his group at Meerkat for a number of months now and very impressed with uh, how things are coming together. Um, I would note that their knowledge base, uh, XQ's knowledge base is, is very complete and you could probably find a lot of setup guides and, and information that you need to really get going. Um, I recommend uh, a trial license and, and uh, get familiar because this may be a real game changer. Uh, we're still working through to make sure that um, with C3PO's that the, <laughs> this is going to pass muster, but um, so far so good. So good job to you guys. Shall I'll Thanks make so sure to well. demo you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what else I'll add that I think is critical um, in this time with CMMC and in this, this space. The XQ team makes themselves available and they listen especially to MSPs and to uh, us in the CMMC space. When we come back, and, and I've literally talked to Brian at midnight my time sometimes, and we're talking about technology and how can we better implement this? Is there a better way to do this? That I love. I love that with a, a company that's driven to just be excellent. Um, I will make one other shout out. Uh, Jeremy Miller is on the call, and he's with... Um, um, Cyber Tackle Box, which is Lionfish, the company. One of the things you're going to need as an MSP is a way to document all that you're implementing. How did you implement this? What did you do? How did you do task? And, and their team, another team that's excellent at listening and excellent at uh, serving this exact space, has that um, product. Um, so I encourage you guys to reach out to that. What you're looking for is GRC software where you are saying, all right, we got to deal with CMMC. Never done it before. How do we do that? They've got tutorials built into their website and ways to track. There are others out there, and I encourage you to look around, but we happen to be using his because I have been so impressed with people who want to get into the space, like the team here, and service the community the best that is humanly possible. 
I think it's worth noting, uh, and I'm not trying to just get on your Venmo list here, Kelby, <laughs> but um, for for clients that are already in the government cloud, um, or those that are going to have to be for uh, particular reasons, um, the functionality that XQ brings and, and the ability to wrap data and keep it protected throughout its life cycle, that's not something that GCC does, right? So um, there true. is, there is uh, uh, it's, an, it's an amazing product on all platforms. Well, John, I'll add you to the list, but it's a really good it. point that you bring up. We can deploy this on-prem in government clouds for those organizations that need something outside of commercial cloud. So as I said, please reach out. We're looking to support you. As Chris mentioned, we will answer your calls late at night, early in the morning, figure out a deployment for some of those unique cases. I think the CAD example with advanced manufacturing, we just got to work, rolled up our sleeves and figure it out. And we're looking to have partners like you. We don't see ourselves just as a vendor. We really see ourselves as a partner to the managed service providers like all of you that have attended today. Thank you so much. I think that was a really great closing. Um, in the spirit of keeping on time, I, we did leave just an all inquiries email address for you to reach out around anything that you want to ask about what was presented on this call. Um, the recording is going to be shared. The presentation deck is going to be shared. The contact details are going to be shared. So you'll have reference of who you need to reach out to, but we appreciate everyone's time. We appreciate our panelists discussion here and uh, we hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Everybody. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye.